Welcome back to Neil's Not So Boring World of Chemistry, where today we're gonna to be tackling the topic of hydrogen bonds. Now this can be an intimidating topic unless you have a video like this that specifically addresses the most common mistakes that people make. I'm gonna be using a different format. Instead of a traditional lecture, you're gonna see me walk you through a visual guide. Let me know if you like this approach in the comments below. If you're ready to get started, let's do this. We're gonna get right into it. Now hydrogen bonds are sometimes called H bonds. Bonds, not bombs. If you want to learn how to build an H-bomb, a weapon of mass destruction, you are absolutely in the wrong place. Now, the story of the H-bomb begins with the story of hydrogen. A long time ago, there was an event called the Big Bang. You know, the theoretical beginning of the universe where all of the hydrogen atoms were created, but we don't have time to get into that. That's way too complicated. So let's just focus on hydrogen itself, which is simply a proton and an electron. That's right. It's the simplest atom, one proton, one electron. That really matters. Keep that in mind. Now over here, I'm going to show you a group of atoms and they are H, F, O, and N. These are the four key players in hydrogen body. And what you should notice is that F, O, and N have high electronegativities while hydrogens is pretty low. So there's a big difference in electronegativity. Oh, you don't remember what electronegativity is? No problem, we can take care of that. If you look at this little weird character over here, you can see that he really wants more electrons. He's reaching out for them. He's greedy for electrons. Well, that's my analogy for what electronegativity is. So now we can reframe this and say that F, O, and N phone, these elements are much more greedy for electrons than hydrogen is. Okay, so what's next? Turns out that when H, hydrogen, bonds to these three elements, fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen, we get a dipole. So we get an area of the bond that's positively charged, an area of the bond that's negatively charged. And you can see here the area of the bond that's positively charged is on the hydrogens, and the area that's negatively charged is on phone that's fluorine or oxygen or nitrogen. Now, please remember, these are not hydrogen bonds that I'm showing you in this picture. They're just covalent bonds, right? Those black lines just represent shared electrons. We haven't gotten to hydrogen bonds yet, but these dipoles are essential. Now, why does the dipole happen? Well, remember, if hydrogen is just an electron and a proton, and if one of these really electronegative atoms pulls those electrons away toward itself, that reveals hydrogen to just be a proton. So you just have this proton hanging out there, and that's why it has a positive charge on that end of the bond. And of course, the electrons being closer to fluorine is why it has a negative charge on that end of the bond. So, so far we've simply explained why when hydrogen is bonded to these three key elements, either F or O, or N, we get a covalent bond with a dipole, a region of negative and positive charge. Now I'm sure you're ready to look at hydrogen bonds, so let's do it. So in this image here, we have a really simple hydrogen bonding scenario. You see two HF molecules. Now notice the color of the bonds. The black lines are just covalent bonds. Those are intramolecular forces. Those are within a single molecule. The first mistake I see with hydrogen bonding is people think anytime something's bonded to H, it's an H bond. It's not. The dotted line, the R orange color represents the hydrogen bond that's between two molecules. And again, look at where the bond is happening. It's between the positive end of one molecule on the hydrogen and the negative end on the other molecule, which is where the more electronegative fluorine is. So it's connecting two different molecules. In this scenario, I show you three different sets of molecules, and in each one, there's a hydrogen bond happening. So in set one, we have a water hydrogen bonded to an HF. In set two, we have two ammonia molecules, which is NH3, and they're hydrogen bonded. And of course, in the last one, we have an alcohol molecule hydrogen bonded to H2O. So what's the big mistake people make with a scenario like this? It's often thought that H bonds occur only when you have two or more of the same molecule. For example, if you have a bunch of waters, they H bond to each other. And yeah, that's true, but don't forget it can happen between molecules that are different as well, as long as they meet the following conditions. One of the molecules has to have hydrogen and it has to be on the phone, bonded to F, O, or N. Because remember, that's going to give us our dipole. That's going to give us our hydrogen atom with a really significant positive charge. Now, the other molecule, even if it's not the same exact molecule, just has to have F or O or N in it, has to have a really electronegative atom where that negative charge is going to be. And it's the attraction between the positive hydrogen and the negative atom in the neighboring molecule that gives us these three hydrogen bonds we see in the picture. 
doesn't have to be the same exact molecule. Okay, moving on, we're gonna look at one more scenario to really try to make this concept as clear as possible and to also just help you get questions right um, when you're faced with them on an exam or something. Compare these two scenarios. On the left, we have one water molecule in the center. It's surrounded by four other water molecules and it's H bonding to all of them. One water molecule can make four H bonds. On the other hand, you see the HF molecule in the middle on the right, and it's got two other HF molecules around it. One HF molecule can only make two H bonds. So molecules can make multiple H bonds. And as you might imagine, the more of those H bonds you make, the stronger the bonds are to these other molecules. So when comparing physical properties such as boiling point uh, or melting point, these are the things that come up in questions, surface tension, evaporation rate, always ask yourself, which molecule can make more H bonds? The more H bonds a molecule can make with other molecules, the stronger the attraction and the higher the physical property. That might be a boiling point or it could be a different physical property. It depends on the question. So let's look at this very simple experiment here. Why is it that you can fit 42 drops of water, which in the image you can see has some food coloring, it looks reddish, to the head of a penny and all those water molecules stick together. If you do the same with rubbing alcohol, which has been dyed green, you can only get 29 drops of that substance on the penny before some of the rubbing alcohol starts to fall off the penny. Why does water stick together better than rubbing alcohol? Well, the answer is hydrogen bonding. Now, they both can make hydrogen bonds to their neighboring molecules. Water molecules can hydrogen bond to each other. Rubbing alcohol molecules can hydrogen bond to other rubbing alcohol molecules. But the difference is water can make four hydrogen bonds around it, where rubbing alcohol can only make two or three. So the number of hydrogen bonds affects the properties. Okay, let's consider everything we've learned and do a little summary as well as a comprehension check. Okay, so what is a hydrogen bond? Firstly, it's a type of an intermolecular force. This just means it connects one molecule to another. Specifically, it's a type of dipole-dipole attraction. When does it occur? In order for a hydrogen bond to form, you're gonna need two polar molecules. Now you have to inspect them and make sure one molecule has H on the phone, which means hydrogen is directly bonded to F, O, or N. In the neighboring molecule, look for F, O, or N as well. Here's an example. You see a water molecule hydrogen bonded to an H, F molecule. The hydrogen bond is the orange dots. Notice that the positively charged hydrogen atom and water is attracted, hydrogen bonded, to the fluorine in the neighboring molecule. Okay, so why does it occur? As we explained, hydrogen is super unique. It's just a proton and an electron. So when you get an electronegative atom like F, O, or N, they pull the shared electrons closer to themselves. This means that the hydrogen is basically just an exposed proton. This is what creates the dipole. This dipole will be attracted to the dipole in another molecule nearby. Here are the three common mistakes you're gonna look out for. Number one, don't ever think a hydrogen bond occurs within a single molecule. These bonds occur between separate molecules. Mistake number two, different types of molecules can hydrogen bond to one another. I know a lot of times we see a bunch of water molecules as the quintessential example of hydrogen bonding. That's not always the case. Mistake number three, the more H bonds a molecule can make, the stronger the intermolecular forces. So four H bonds, is definitely stronger than three or two or one. And of course, this will affect physical properties. Okay, let's do a practice question. Which of the following pairs of molecules will form a hydrogen bond between them? Pause the video, think about it, come up with an answer, unpause to check your solution. Okay, the answer is C. In this choice, we see an alcohol, CH3OH, and ammonia, NH3. Now, first of all, both of these molecules are polar. The other choices don't have this feature. Beyond that, we see that we have hydrogen on the phone. In the alcohol molecule, hydrogen is directly bonded to O, and in the neighboring molecule, we do have the very electronegative N. Thank you all so much for watching. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Neil's not-so-boring world of chemistry. 
let's go into the lab and take a deep 